one year, 365 days of Assassin's Creed Mirage. Wow. Time flies when you're, uh, getting old. <laughs> Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Robotopolis Show. And I guess it's actually been a bit longer than 365 days now. I wanted to get this video out sooner, but I ran into some pretty extreme technical setbacks, and I was also waiting on a secret special guest who I asked to assist me with this video, but uh, more on that later. If you're a regular viewer of mine, I don't need to tell you how special of a game AC Mirage is to me, and if you're not a regular viewer of mine, let me just tell you, Assassin's Creed Mirage is a special game to me. A lot of other creators have made videos like this one, giving their takes on this so-called Return to Roots experience from Ubisoft Bordeaux after giving the game some time to breathe. Most recently and notably, the legendary Mr. Whitelight, who much to my surprise gave me a little shout out. So thank you so much for that. Consider this me returning the favor, not that he needs any help from little old me. And while I greatly appreciate any little crumb of recognition I can get, I do have a confession to make. I didn't watch the White Light video. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I fully intend to watch it once I'm done with this video, but I wanted to wait because I think I have kind of a unique perspective to share on this game stemming from my unique and obsessive approach and I didn't want to be influenced too much by someone smarter, more well-spoken, and uh, thorough than me. And while I do love this game very much, I'm not afraid to offer a bit of constructive criticism where it's deserved, so don't worry, I won't be simping too terribly hard today. So what makes my perspective on Mirage unique? Well, I guess it's time for a little Rapatopolis story time. Remember, the lore is important on this channel. While I have always considered myself to be a classic parkour enthusiast, and almost all of my early YouTube videos are Ezio Trilogy videos, Mirage, or more specifically, the fanbase's response to Mirage, is largely responsible for me beginning this silly little YouTube journey that I'm currently on. From the very beginning of the marketing and promotion of this game, Ubisoft was insistent that Mirage was a back-to-roots experience, the one that many fans of the series have been begging for. A smaller scale, urban-based, parkour and stealth-focused experience much more comparable to the Ezio games or Unity than the massive RPG-style games that they've delivered since departing from that classic formula. So we waited and waited for a gameplay showcase to finally be released, and when it did, oh boy, let's just say, there were a lot of mixed reactions, and looking at all these different reactions is actually really interesting when you think about all the elements that play a part in people's preferences. With a series like Assassin's Creed that's been around for as long as it has, and been as successful as it has been, and had so many different iterations since its conception, it's really easy to see why so many people felt so differently about what we were looking at. Assassin's Creed has fans that live and die by the technical mechanics that made the original game so special. Assassin's Creed has fans that swear Unity has the best parkour in any Assassin's Creed game. Assassin's Creed has fans that have played 3,000 hours of Odyssey and then never touched another AC game. Assassin's Creed has fans that love the original games but have never heard of the term side eject, so it's really interesting when you think about it to see all these different people, different types of fans, gather together in a YouTube comment section to share their opinion on the new Back to Roots style Assassin's Creed game, and poor poor Ubisoft Bordeaux has the unenviable position of having to deliver this video to us. Whoa, alright, sorry for that little tangent, I, I just thought that was interesting. Anyways, uh, the reactions. The tech nerds were disappointed, but not surprised to see what appeared to be the clunky, magnetized, hyper-contextual parkour of the RPG games. RPG fans were excited to see a familiar system in a more dense urban environment. The Unity kids were upset that there weren't enough pretty twirls, and the guys who love AC2 but have never heard of a side eject couldn't tell the difference between this system and the classic system. It was really all over the place. Like the tech guys, I was a bit disappointed. I had hoped to see a full return to form and movement, complete with manual ejects, ledge grabs, all that good stuff, but after watching for a moment, it wasn't hard to tell that this was just the RPG parkour system with a fresh coat of paint. Which again, isn't surprising, especially since Ubisoft was open about Mirage being more of a spin-off game than a main flagship title, with far less time and a much smaller budget to work with than any of their other recent titles. At least they'd be passing those savings on to us, launching the game at a $50 price tag instead of the new industry standard $70. But despite my disappointment in what we saw, I felt a strange sense of optimism. The parkour route taken in the demo was boring, unimaginative, and predetermined, but that's kind of expected from these types of gameplay demos. And even the very best Assassin's Creed games had these kind of predetermined parkour paths paved for you. It was always up to the player to break free from those paths. Upon looking closer at the architecture around Basim, you can see more beams, more handholds, windows, more stuff to interact with. This demo doesn't really give us a great look at what Baghdad really has to offer, but from what we could see, I couldn't help but smell potential. In the days following this gameplay demonstration, I started to see a bunch of videos popping up on my YouTube recommendations of old school, classic Assassin's Creed parkour videos. I had never seen these types of videos before. I didn't even know that AC parkour choreography was a thing on YouTube, which is pretty exciting for me to find out. And the one thing that many of these videos had in common around this time was the title. 
These creators were using what they and many others viewed as a disappointment about Mirage's movement as a springboard to showcase technical movement in the classic Assassin's Creed games, all with titles sort of disparaging Mirage, like Mirage's parkour could never be this good, or something of that nature. The most notable example of this comes from the great Jacers, and I can't prove this, but we will say that he was the first to take a shot at Mirage with a parkour choreography video title. He's a trailblazer like that, a true trendsetter. In fact, this video actually came out nine months before Mirage's gameplay demo. It just wasn't recommended to me until I started falling down the rabbit hole of parkour choreography recommendations. And I don't mean any disrespect to Jacers by calling him out for being mean to my beloved Mirage. If he hadn't, we probably wouldn't be here talking about any of this today. In fact, he left a comment on my most recent Mirage video confessing that he thinks Ubisoft Bordeaux did a pretty good job with this game considering the circumstances of its development. Funny how things come full circle, huh? Anyways, after watching his video, and I took a closer look at his channel and realized that he wasn't just some guy who posts classic parkour videos, he was THE guy who posts classic parkour videos. His channel is a wealth of knowledge and chock full of great examples on how to properly optimize classic movement. It was at some point during my trip down this rabbit hole that I decided to take a crack at classic parkour choreography myself. I was no Jacers, but I had been playing Assassin's Creed religiously since 2009 and was no stranger to using ejects and other simple optimizations to move around more efficiently. Why not make a video? That sounds pretty fun. It wasn't fun. It was the greatest mistake of my life. I really wish I, wish I had never done it. Look at me now. It's completely consumed me. <laughs> I just want my wife and kids back. I miss the cats. Nah, I'm just playing. We're, we're good. So I just kept uploading videos and trying to improve and trying to make people laugh with titles and thumbnails and whatever else I could use as a tool to deliver jokes. And uh, what the hell am I doing? This isn't my life story. I'm sorry. I'm getting a bit carried away here. Uh, let's just skip ahead a bit. As the release date for Mirage got closer, I got more and more annoyed with the general pessimism surrounding the game. Ubisoft released more gameplay, some even showing improvements to animations and character speed, which are two things that were heavily criticized after the first showcase, but people kept taking shots at the game and it really started to get on my nerves. I wanted so desperately for this game to be good, and to be able to make content with it. I was a very new, very small channel, I think I only had like two or three hundred subscribers at the time, and I wanted to be able to use this new Assassin's Creed game to help grow my Assassin's Creed channel a bit. Crazy, right? So the more mean statements and disparaging comments I read, the more inspired I became to take this game with all its alleged shortcomings and make the absolute most out of it. I wanted to prove people wrong about it. I wanted people to click on my video with the expectation that the gameplay was going to look bad and then leave a comment after watching to say, holy shit, this game actually looks pretty sick. I tried my best to refamiliarize myself with the RPG parkour system by toying around with Origins in the weeks leading up to its release and before I knew it, Assassin's Creed Mirage was here. I tried my best to not rush through the prologue, but I didn't really care all that much about the story. Actually, I never really had the option to enjoy the story much at all because my wife and I had a baby one month prior to its release, so I played the majority of Mirage's story between the hours of 1 and 5 a.m. with a baby sleeping on my chest and the volume of the TV turned almost completely off. Anyways, I completed the intro to the game, and the very moment they cut me loose in Baghdad, it was parkour time. I ran around, quickly scanning the city for a place I could potentially put a parkour route together, and I found a spot that was suitable and started planning, climbing, trying to get a feel for what the game was actually like to play. And there was a moment, and I've never actually admitted this before, but there was a moment while I was playing, and I was trying to put together a route, and I put the controller down and I said to myself, oh my god, it really does suck. This is terrible. I couldn't control Basim, he felt sticky, magnetized, and slow. Worst of all, after performing some little tests, I also now had confirmation beyond a shadow of a doubt that height gaining ejects were not returning. We only had the dinky little RPG ejects that always reminded me of toothpaste squirting out of the tube. I don't know why, that's a really weird comparison, but that's what it feels like to me, okay? So I was really disappointed, but I frustratedly finished my little route and posted it and went to bed. I knew I couldn't give up though. I had set this goal for myself and I knew that this new AC game presented a great opportunity for growth. And if there was a chance that I could be the guy saying, hey, the parkour in this game is actually pretty good in a sea of people saying, this parkour sucks, I was gonna make it happen. So I kept practicing, testing, working on things, paying close attention to my thumbsticks, precisely where I was pointing them, trying different methods of ejecting, you name it. I tried everything. I spent hours just climbing around, trying different things until I started to feel a little bit more comfortable, like I had a little bit more control, and I just never stopped. I made more and more videos, more parkour routes, tested more stuff, tweaked more things until I got them working the way people said it was impossible, or at least horribly inconsistent. It wasn't long before I put together some videos that I thought were great, and other people seemed to think so as well. I started getting a lot of those comments that I wanted to see all along, saying, wow, I thought this game was trash, but you actually made it look so good. So, 
here we are. One year, 89 parkour videos, one parkour update, and two parkour tutorials later, and I can genuinely say, from a gameplay perspective, Assassin's Creed Mirage is a top 5 AC game for me, which is saying a lot, because my top 4 is virtually uncrackable. Mirage is not a perfect game. It does suffer from a number of technical issues that plague the RPG games because it's built on the shoulders of those games, but I truly believe that the good people at Ubisoft Bordeaux did everything they could with the limited time and resources that they were given to execute the closest thing that we've had to a classic AC game since at least Syndicate in 2015. I would argue Mirage is even more of a classic experience than Syndicate. It's a style of gameplay that I've come to miss more and more as each new Assassin's Creed comes and goes, each offering a larger and more ambitious experience than the last. And we all know that bigger isn't always better. The RPG games have their fans, for sure, but the compromises that they have to make in order to create these massive open world experiences sacrifice many of the things that made Assassin's Creed special to so many of us. I think that's why I so desperately needed Mirage to be good. I didn't particularly enjoy the RPG games, not even because the games themselves are necessarily bad, but they aren't Assassin's Creed games to me. Even if the execution of those games was flawless, it wouldn't feel right to me to have the name Assassin's Creed attached to that type of experience. It's just not what I'm looking for in an AC game. That's where my optimism from that initial gameplay demo comes in. Regardless of what the movement itself looked like, I could tell from that short clip that the environment was more dense and designed with parkour in mind. If I could just commit to learning how to make the most out of its systems, I could apply them to this new city and show people that this is what Assassin's Creed is all about. Cities. Buildings, rooftops, streets and alleyways, crowds, guard patrols and hiding places, and mastering the way you navigate these spaces to impose complete domination on your enemies in a stylish manner. Mirage creates a world where this classic gameplay loop can thrive if you're willing to tolerate its less than perfect movement mechanics, and oh boy was I willing to tolerate them. Anything to get back to these elements that I've missed so much for so long. I think in order to compensate for the movement system they were basically forced into using, Ubisoft Bordeaux did the smartest thing they could possibly do by doubling down on city design. Seriously, Mirage's Baghdad is absolutely top notch in all aspects. Again, I'm biased towards the original games and I think the far superior movement system in those games lends itself to making the cities it exists in better, but after AC1 through Revelation cities, I truly think Mirage's Baghdad is the best. I'll put it on par with Unity. Unity has the best atmosphere in my opinion, but when it comes to the architecture, Mirage is right there next to it. Baghdad has this perfectly balanced, varied design across the city that never feels repetitive. There's always something new to look at or a weird, different looking structure to climb. The attention to detail throughout is extremely impressive. If you slow down and really look around you, you'll notice it's hard to go more than a few steps without finding something interesting to look at. They also did a really great job at making the different districts feel unique. There are more industrial areas, commercial areas, little neighborhoods, small and large, each of them with their own distinct identity and feeling. The atmosphere and lighting also changes from district to district, making the city feel larger than it already is. The Round City is the crown jewel of Baghdad. This massive district in the middle of the city is one of the most beautiful settings I've ever seen in any video game, period. The intricate architecture, crazy high attention to detail, the flowers and fountains and colors all coating this dense urban area and making it feel alive, it's magic. There really seems to be something special around every corner, on every rooftop, it's insane. All of these things are beautiful, yes, and they lend themselves to creating a believable atmosphere to exist in, but it's also important that the city is functional for movement, and guess what? It is. The reason it was so important for Bordeaux to double down on city design for Mirage lies in this rickety old RPG system that we have to use. And while there are plenty of things to say about this system, I think the most important one to understand when we're talking about how it works in any given setting is how contextually dependent it is. Almost every action that you perform in Mirage is context based. This is mostly seen when jumping, which is kind of the foundation for moving around in a parkour game, and what I mean by this is that almost every jump you perform in Mirage has a target locked in. He's aiming for something 95% of the time. The only time we see a true, non-contextual jump is when we see this little flailing arms animation when he jumps off a tall building or towards a street with nothing to target. Other than these jumps, basically every step you take in this game has a target as determined by the game and the player's input that keep Bassam moving fluidly from object to object. This is the way movement in AC has been since Unity, and while you could say that even the classic games or the Kenway Saga games have a high number of these kinds of contextual moves happening constantly, it was always much easier to break free from those chains and move kind of off this predetermined grid whenever you choose to do so. So, since the RPG era system is heavily dependent on these contexts in order to produce any sort of satisfying results, it was very important for the developers to give us a lot of those contexts to depend on. You could really tell by looking at any given area in the city that they designed this thing from the ground up with parkour in mind, and that makes me so incredibly happy. 
But it's not just the city design that so greatly helped this parkour system perform better than ever. They also improved, well, the performance of the parkour system itself. Mirage makes improvements to the RPG system speed, and probably more importantly, the infamous heaviness of those games. It was always a strange thing to see Bayek's ability to sometimes pull off these long jumps and other times just drop like a rock. Mirage balanced that out to create a more reliable and consistent feeling smoothness, which is extremely important in a game like this. And of course, the most legendary thing that Mirage did for us lies in the post-launch parkour update. Mirage is the first game in Assassin's Creed history to release an update that fundamentally improves parkour, most notably allowing for height gaining ejects. This is a feature that's long requested to make a return ever since it disappeared completely with 2017's Origins, and Mirage brought it to us on the heels of a PC mod of the game that did the same thing. This improved overall movement drastically, and while they sometimes looked or behaved a bit wonky just due to the game not really being built for them, it's still incredible to have them back. While the return of these ejects was a huge win gameplay-wise, it's even more special that Ubisoft Bordeaux acknowledged us as fans and listened to our request and gave us this little gift. It's something we don't see often from huge developers like Ubisoft, so it was really nice to be heard and to see them follow the lead of the modding community and give us this feature back across all platforms. While I am a student and enjoyer of movement above all else, there is more to talk about than just parkour and mirage. It also gave us a much more functional stealth experience from anything we've seen in recent entries, mostly due to a brand new set of tools complete with some familiar favorites of the series. The tools in Mirage are probably most comparable to Unity, giving us stuff like smoke bombs, noise makers, sleep darts, and new additions like the trap, which can be triggered based on enemy proximity or, strangely enough, a whistle. This trigger can be changed at the tool modification bench, which allows us to modify all of our tools to match our preferences, almost like customizing bombs in Revelations. This allows for some pretty unique builds to be made, and you can even go for like an incendiary type build and put fire perks on many of your tools to scorch everybody in your path. Funnily enough, my favorite improvement of the tools in Mirage comes from this wheel you use to select them. A weapon wheel is hardly a new or innovative feature in gaming, but it sure beats the hell out of whatever this is. These tools are great, and they really pushed me to change up my playstyle, not just in-game, but also with the type of content I create. I was basically a parkour-only channel before Mirage came out, but with so many tools to use and lots of opportunities to use them in a creative way, I couldn't help but start posting some stealth-related content. One thing I think Mirage does better than any AC game is that it allows you to seamlessly transition from parkour to stealth in a very smooth and satisfying way. The airstrike skill is really the move that bridges that gap, allowing you to take down enemies with a throwing knife mid-air. These movement-based kills make the transition from doing fancy tricks to throwing tools around and stabbing guys in the face feel very natural, as if Basim is just one smooth moving lethal killing monster. It was a great move to bring back a tool-heavy stealth experience for us to play with. It's stuff like this that breeds online communities like this one to grow. Between having a ton of tool combinations to play with in a huge variety of situations, and then the soft return of actually being able to somewhat express yourself through parkour, Mirage leaves a ton of space for players to fill in the blanks and share their unique playstyles or any interesting tool interactions they found along the way. It also inadvertently helps the game market itself, with many players like myself essentially supplying millions of views worth of free advertising for the game. Hell, it's like we actually paid them to advertise for them. The one obvious drawback that kind of puts a wet towel on Mirage's stealth experience is the highly inconsistent and usually brain-dead AI. The common lack of competence shown by guards in this game is kind of silly and doesn't make for much of a challenge in most situations, but at least it makes for some funny moments and the guards serve as great props or punching bags for choreographed stealth runs. The tools in Mirage push its stealth playstyle in the direction of more of a traditional stealth experience, which is not exactly what most people would call the classic Assassin's Creed stealth. The famous social stealth that the classic games featured is another gameplay pillar that makes a soft return here in Mirage, and while many of the elements of that classic social stealth experience are here, like crowd blending, bench assassinations, and so on, it just doesn't properly work in Mirage the way it did in the good old days. Crowds don't really move as a unit like they did in the older titles, making crowd blending super inconsistent and hard to actually use to your advantage. They're much better used as a stationary hiding place than a clever way to move past a group of guards unseen. The other main advantage of crowd blending in the classic games is being able to use it offensively. In the old games, our assassins were invisible while assassinating an enemy while blending and for a brief moment afterwards. This perk is absent in Mirage, and the entire social stealth experience suffers as a result. Mirage does, however, have these factions that you can hire with a special little coin, and purchasing their services will allow you to blend with them or sneak into an area or distract a group of guards with a song, something like that. 
This is a fun addition to the social stealth experience, probably most comparable to the scholars of AC1 or the courtesans and mercenaries of the Ezio games, but with these social stealth elements overall being of lower quality than the classic games and Basim's extensive tool set at our disposal, rarely did I ever use these social stealth mechanics in favor of a more head-on stealth approach during my playthrough. Hold on, wait a minute. Future Rapatopoulos here, and I, uh, I gotta interrupt myself for a second. Please forgive me for the sudden drop in audio quality. With my broken laptop situation, it's hard for me to get clean audio. I was finished recording my voiceover stuff already, but when I started arranging the video for this, uh, video, I realized I missed something major that I would get cooked for not bringing up. I definitely could have mentioned this when we talked about the reactions to the gameplay reveal, there were certainly some strong opinions expressed about this feature, but it also fits equally as well in the stealth category. That's right folks, it's time to talk about Assassin's Focus. Assassin's Focus is an ability in AC Mirage that's considered to be a stealth ability, but it can be used in a variety of different ways. This ability allows Basim to freeze time so long as he's undetected and select up to 5 targets, when fully upgraded, within a pretty generous range and take them out in just a few seconds. Basim will remain unseen so long as he is out of sight from any guards after the last selected target is killed. This ability is recharged by performing stealth kills on other enemies. Assassin's Focus is among the most criticized things in the entire game for a couple of reasons. First, and probably more obviously, this ability can certainly be described as a super ability. Super abilities have become more and more common in AC games as time marches forward and many people, myself included, don't care much for them in Assassin's Creed. This series was built on playable characters who possess extremely high levels of somewhat believable human abilities, so the addition of superpowers in these games just feels wrong. Assassin's Focus is explained by developers as a glitch in the Animus, with Basim moving so quickly that the simulation can't render his movements properly. I don't necessarily mind this explanation, but if I remember correctly, it isn't explained that way narratively within the game itself, only behind the scenes. Plus, Basim reacts in a matter of surprise the first time we use this ability in-game, indicating that he also realized realizes something very strange just happened, perhaps beyond just being impressed by his own speed. There are a couple more non-canon fan-made theories of other ways this ability could be explained that I actually like better, my favorite being that Basim sort of enters a flow state where he's so focused, hence the name, that he attacks his enemies almost autonomously, without thinking. And since he's operating in such a way, and the Animus being a machine that renders its visuals from memory, the gaps in Basim's memory when he enters this focused state are unable to be rendered at all. Pretty cool, right? Anyways, Animus glitch explanation or not, many people were not happy to see a super ability like this, especially considering the game is a back to roots type of situation and there was nothing like this in the original games. The other main criticism of Assassin's Focus is how overpowered it is, and yeah, it is pretty overpowered. Taking out 5 targets at once, especially with the generous range we're given, can be pretty game breaking. I personally like using Assassin's Focus as a nice little finishing move to a combo or as a tool for movement to reach an area you wouldn't normally be able to. It's also nice to be able to strategically place yourself in different areas depending on your situation. I almost never use it to chain kill because, again, it feels too overpowered. But using it after a mid-air throwing knife to take out an additional target kind of restores some of the skill involved in its use and I think it actually looks pretty cool. Especially when you get to see a dude get hit in the face with a knife in slow motion. One other cool little observation I heard Leo K make about Assassin's Focus is that it can be used to extend the duration of your tool's effects, like here in this clip I used earlier. Using Assassin's Focus after throwing this smoke bomb lets us skip the run over to this guy. Now he's dead and effectively no time has passed since I threw that bomb. So after a quick climb and jog back over here, these two guys are still getting hotboxed, ready to be taken out. I definitely understand why some people don't like Assassin's Focus. I would even agree that it probably doesn't belong in this game, but I don't mind it. It does make Mirage unique. No other AC game has this ability. And after the first time you use it in the store, you never have to touch it again if you so choose. And you're free to use it however you want, so it doesn't really hurt the game if you're one of the people who just hate it so much. Just ignore it, it can't hurt you. The combat in Mirage is probably the unanimously decided weak point of the entire game. It offers kind of a perfect miniature bite-sized example of what Mirage is overall, with a sort of recreation of an old school style of counter-based combat, but it's obvious to see that it's very much born of RPG DNA. Basim is advertised as a bit of a glass cannon. The game encourages you to avoid combat situations at all costs because just a few hits will send Basim to his grave. But the true incentive to avoid Mirage's combat is the overall unsatisfying experience it offers. One of the most popular criticisms of combat is the fact that enemies seem entirely unfazed by your light attacks, making it feel like Basim is swinging around a pool noodle. This can be avoided by exclusively using heavy attacks, but that robs the system of about half of the very little variety that it has. 
With only one weapon style to play with and your only real offensive moves being light, heavy attacks and kick, there's really not much depth to be found. The kick can be pretty fun though, I gotta admit. Launching guards off rooftops or in harm's way of other environmental hazards can be pretty fun, and they also can be used in combination with tools to make for some satisfying moments. There are actually quite a few incredibly badass sword finishers that can occur, some really brutal stuff. Unfortunately, they don't happen nearly as often as I'd like. The absolute best way to spice up combat in Mirage is to use tools mid-fight. It can really level the playing field if you're ever outnumbered, and using them to end things quickly will oftentimes avoid the chances of something awkward or stupid looking happening. Mirage's combat is definitely an afterthought, it feels like it kind of only exists because it has to, and while there are a few treats to be found that can offer some fun gameplay, combat just isn't the focus of this game, and with developmental resources stretched as thin as they were for this title, I'm willing to give my friends at Bordeaux a pass for not quite sticking the landing in the combat department. Well geez, I, I think that covers everything uh, that I wanted to talk about gameplay-wise for Mirage, and it's just really unfortunate that I have this huge hole missing in my head as far as the story goes. It feels plain wrong to release this video without even mentioning anything story-related. That's why I enlisted the help of Assassin's Creed YouTube legend Altair Stealth, or maybe you know him as the Spaniard, to sub in and help me finish this thing off. Can you believe this guy is two guys at the same time, folks? I have a hard enough time just being one guy, jeez. Okay, Mr. Stealth, uh, why don't you tell us what you thought of the story in Mirage? Hello everyone, I'm the Spaniard, or Altair Stealth, depending on which channel you had the misfortune of coming across first. And I've been wrangled in by Rob to tell you my overall thoughts on the game's narrative, whether it succeeds, fails, or falls somewhere in between like most things coming out of Ubisoft these days. Mirage's narrative seemed mostly pre-written by the time the trailer dropped. Ubisoft Bordeaux had a unique challenge of having to write a story whose conclusion we had already witnessed and whose main villain or culprit for the tragedy had already shown his face. This left the narrative team with an even harder challenge when making this game. A challenge that was added onto the pre-existing huge task of going back to the roots with its assassin storyline, a quest that anyone can tell you was almost impossible to pull off while pleasing everyone. And please everyone, it did not. Similar to the parkour and other areas of the game, the story was received with mixed criticism. Just like Rob, I wanted people to be proved wrong and have the story turn out to be fantastic and great. Perhaps it was simply wishful thinking because this was a story that we had never really seen before, at least not to this extent. The story of Basim, the first assassin to kind of fall out of love with the Creed and rebel against it, is a bold narrative shift that sets this game apart from its predecessors. As someone who's been aching for a darker, Creed-centric story, the promise alone had me in Mirage's corner cheering it on. And though not all of it landed the way it should, some of it definitely did. So let's start this analysis with what works. The overarching theme for Basim's journey is extremely powerful and extremely emotionally evocative, at least for me, someone who has now put Basim in his top five protagonists, just like Rob has put the, the parkour system in his top five. Exploring his disillusionment with the Creed was unlike anything I'd seen before, because Altair or Bayek or even Connor, who had similar distaste for a lot of the Brotherhood's philosophies, ultimately found meaning in the Brotherhood's ideals. Basim's path takes kind of a darker turn. His evolution from an eager recruit to a jaded, conflicted man adds complexity to a franchise often centered on righteous protagonists. Basim is someone who, to me at least, seems more selfish than righteous, even when some of his actions would lead people to think otherwise. I think Basim is framed as someone who's constantly doing the right thing, but for very surface level reasons, and this is something that's both a strength and a flaw of Assassin's Creed Mirage. He is someone who wishes more of his life than what was given to him, perhaps because of his own grand self-perception, or maybe just for the lack of reverence that he gives his own situation and the people around him. To me, Basim's character is the most successful and interesting thing about the entire narrative section of the game. Just because of its uniqueness in his position, and the amount of crazy, insane lore you have to build throughout years for a character with a story to even be possible. I mean, you have to establish the assassins, the sages, the sage tree, the idea of sages coming back at a specific point in time. You have to establish Templars, Hidden Ones, the Order of the Ancients and their unique relationship with the Isu compared to the Templars. You have to establish the pieces of Eden and what they can do, new versions of the Animus, the idea of the Isu being gods from respective geographical regions. I mean, this is years of groundwork that made Basim's story possible. And the fact that the writers were able to recognize that opportunity and capitalize on it makes me extremely happy because this is something that as a longtime fan you want to see. You want to see a story that is so unique and so context dependent within the franchise that not many other franchises could do it. Basim has a very unique arc, one that is meant to leave the player kind of unnerved with his character, liking him but being a little bit unsure whether to trust him. And that is done with oscillating quality by Ubisoft. 
While Mirage excels in many of its character-driven moments, especially that between Basim and Nihal, whose friendship I loved, his mentor Roshan, or other smaller side characters, the pacing and structure kind of hold the narrative back, and this is probably the biggest criticism I've seen online that I agree with. The game allows you to complete the middle assassinations, the main assassinations, in any order you want, which is obviously fun and important for player freedom, but it disrupts Basim's character progression. His journey from fanatic to skeptic feels uneven because the structure forces his doubts and growth to stall in favor of maximizing gameplay flexibility. A lot of the momentum that is generated during those confession scene moments are completely snuffed out in lieu of a better or at least more modern game design. In my opinion, I think a tighter, more linear narrative could have better showcased the emotional weight of Basim's transformation. It always felt like during these amazing, mo-capped, well-detailed cutscenes, you were kind of reaching towards a story climax only for that to be completely destroyed because you have to experience that in three other missions and all of those missions could have been a mission you played before the one you just did. So I think that was a big issue with the pacing and I think that a linear narrative could have helped uh, maintaining that momentum a bit more. The mission design is something that is fantastic within this game and I, th I think something that compensates really heavily for the problem that I just mentioned about pacing. The main thing that I like about the mission design is that it does something that I've always appreciated any game doing which is it gives you missions that feed the narrative outside of the cutscenes. Every mission you do in Mirage is not only well designed, but thematically relevant. In the freedom you're given in the movement and the tool usage, to the reasons why you decide to do the things you, that you do and what you're doing in any given area. The character of Basim as a charismatic, smart and deadly assassin are constantly consolidated by the gameplay and the mission choice. And that is a huge part of why game narratives are so unique compared to any other storytelling medium. So in my books, that's a huge point for Mirage because it does something that games really should capitalize on it if they want to compensate for the lack of narrative momentum they have because of the necessity for gameplay. That kind of leads into the issue of agency within the narrative outside of the gameplay. When you look into scripted moments, there is a big issue of agency with Basim's character. Throughout Mirage, Basim's development is more influenced by external forces, namely Nihal and Roshan, than his own choices. While this works for a lot of the story of disillusionment and, and being disillusioned by the people around you and the Creed, it does make him feel a bit passive at times, especially compared to more proactive assassins that we've seen before. Basim kind of just shows up where he needs to show up, and then he does what he needs to do, and there are probably two or three moments where a plot-relevant event is caused by Basim and his own decision-making. In the end, Assassin's Creed Mirage offers a compelling and emotionally resonant story that I personally was extremely satisfied with, but it does have structural issues and an uneven pacing that stop it from fully reaching its potential. It also struggles with depth. I won't attribute this lack of depth to a lack of understanding by the devs, which is what a lot of people are saying is the cause of this lack of depth. I truly believe that Ubisoft Bordeaux are real fans of Assassin's Creed, of old Assassin's Creed, and understand what makes it so special. So I'd rather attribute these limitations to scope, time, and budget. Obviously, this is kind of a side game to hold us over until AC Shadows, and not everything that we would have wanted to see in Mirage was able to happen. And the narrative suffers for it. There are a lot of times when this returns to roots thing is merely surface level. You see Basim discussing things with the assassins, or defending them, or doing assassin things, or kind of preaching assassin ideals, never really going into why the assassins exist or why they believe what they do. They behave in a more generic kind of way without really going into what makes this cult of fanatics so interesting yet disturbing. And that would have fueled much more the, the immersion and the disillusionment that we eventually see Basim go through. You see things being done that are assassin-like without really explaining the reasons behind them. It sometimes felt like Mirage just kind of had a checklist of things that it wanted to cross off to prove that it was a return to roots. A bunch of visual and surface level, forward facing things, outward facing things that Ubisoft Bordeaux just wanted to make sure to include in the game instead of naturally weaving these things into the story because of its own nature. Nonetheless, in my opinion, I think this story was a complete success, a game that is worth playing for fans of the series. And as people who like story driven games and the stories in Assassin's Creed, I think this is definitely one of the better ones if a little bit limited because of the scope. Thank you very much, Mr. Altair Stealth slash the Spaniard for helping me out, uh, filling in the gaps and my incompetence. Uh, I haven't actually heard uh, what you were saying yet at the time of my recording this, so I'm just going to assume that it was very good and uh, we'll move on from there. So. Uh, what to make of all this? Uh, let's see here. On paper, everything here sounds pretty close to the Assassin's Creed games of old, but is it really the classic Back to Roots Assassin's Creed experience we were promised? Well, yes. But also, no. It really is a strange entry in the franchise, and that makes it difficult to judge. 
It certainly has many elements of the classic games, but it's weighed down by a lot of RPG baggage that already has a not-so-spectacular reputation amongst Mirage's target audience, old-school fans. It can be difficult to look past these systems that so many of us have grown to hate in order to enjoy the rest of the experience we've been presented with. At its core, the way this game plays, it feels like the RPG games, the same games that stole away this classic experience from us in the first place. So, it's difficult for some people to look past. But if you're willing to push through it, if you're willing to work with all the weird little quirks that come with this RPG foundation that this game is built upon, I think you'll find that there's a lot to enjoy for classic fans. And it's clear that Ubisoft Bordeaux cares about this game and loves Assassin's Creed like we do, and that they did everything they could with the limited resources they were given to deliver as close to a classic Assassin's Creed experience as they possibly could. Those classic games were magic. The Ezio trilogy is so intertwined with my high school years, it feels like it's burned into my very soul. I know it probably feels the same for many of you. And that's a really difficult thing to try to recapture, an impossible standard to try to live up to. Mirage did its best to try and do just that. But I think a year later, after giving the game some time to breathe, it's clear to me that a true classic Assassin's Creed experience can't be made by Frankensteining a bunch of newer mechanics together over a project with less time and a smaller budget than you're willing to give to your other games. If you're really going to try to recapture the magic that made this series so popular in the first place, it needs to be a priority. It needs to be built from the ground up, taking all the gameplay pillars from the original games and investing the time and effort it takes to make them just as good as they were back then. It needs a mechanically deep parkour system that allows for creative freedom and risk taking. It needs fully operational social stealth that rewards players for using it in a thoughtful way. It needs mission design that truly gives us options in our approach and lets us tackle them as we see fit. These things need to be prioritized and built specifically for a classic Assassin's Creed game instead of forcing a small team to take leftover pieces from the games that robbed us of that experience in order to emulate it. The first four games are very special games, and for people like me who love them so much, they're an almost impossibly high standard to reach. And as much love as I have for Mirage, and as much respect as I have for Ubisoft Bordeaux for caring about this game, for doing everything they could to revive the spirit of Assassin's Creed, for listening to fans and working hard to give us what we wanted, I just don't think a true classic AC game can be made as a side project. It can't be treated like an appetizer for your next RPG. If you're going to compare your game to the likes of the Ezio trilogy, you have to make it a top priority. It's a lot to live up to, and I don't think it can be done by a project that's specifically intended to be more or less filler. All this being said, I do love Mirage, and I think I always will. It's been a goldmine for me as far as making videos, and I've had a ton of fun trying to learn all of its secret and showing people that this game can look amazing if you find the patience to learn it inside and out. If you do find the patience, I think that you'll find that the good people at Ubisoft Bordeaux have created a game that has a lot to enjoy for classic fans like myself. I know it's easy to criticize Ubisoft for some of the things they've done and the decisions they've made, but I think Mirage is a great reminder that they're good people in this company, like the ones at Bordeaux. Talented, hard-working developers who do want what's best for the series and that do want to deliver a game that fans will love, a game that captures the spirit of Assassin's Creed that we used to know. My point is, give Ubisoft Bordeaux more time. Give Ubisoft Bordeaux more money. Let Ubisoft Bordeaux make a true classic Back to Roots AC experience. There's a very good chance we will never see a true Assassin's Creed game again that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with games like AC1, AC2, and Revelations, but for me, Mirage is the first game in a long time to get close to scratching that itch. And if Ubisoft decides to continue down this route with intermittent classic AC games, I think Mirage is a beautiful first step. Okay, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you again to Altair Stealth slash The Spaniard for helping me out with this, and I'll see you next time.